witches toss another spell at Donald Trump. Former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak is finally free. And a large volcano in Russia erupts for the first time since Catherine the Great. It's Skywatch TV for Tuesday, March 28th, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, British officials say that RAF jets were operating in the region of Mosul in Iraq, where hundreds of civilians were allegedly killed during coalition airstrikes on March 17th. The British tornadoes destroyed five terrorist Islamic State targets using laser-guided missiles, but they were flying in very challenging conditions and heavy cloud, according to the British government. As many as 200 civilians may have lost their lives in those strikes in Mosul. The U.S.-led coalition said it carried out a strike on ISIS militants and equipment in the area of the reported deaths. An investigation into those deaths is now underway. China Petroleum and Chemical Company, or Corporation, rather, or Sinopec, says it's been invited to invest in the Saudi Arabian oil company, Saudi Aramco, as part of the world's biggest ever initial public offering of stock. Talks are ongoing between Sinopec and Saudi Aramco. Saudi Arabia apparently wants to deepen its relationships with uh, its biggest buyers and lock in future demand for its oil. Saudi King Salman led a delegation to Asia this month where Saudi Aramco pledged $15 billion, $13 billion worth of investments in refining projects. Now, for friend Joel Richardson, author of the recent book Mystery Babylon, is right about uh, Saudi Arabia and Mecca being Mystery Babylon of end times prophecy. If you're marrying the world's biggest oil supplier with the world's biggest country, yeah, this could be something to keep our eyes on. The Kambalni volcano has erupted for the first time since the reign of Catherine the Great, a five mile high plume recorded from the southernmost major volcano in the Kamchatka Peninsula, that's in the far east of Russia. It's awoken for the first time in 248 years, believed to be the first eruption since 1769. Tourist organizations been warned by the Russian government to stay away. It's uh, the so-called land of fire and ice, again, the eastern, extreme eastern part of Russia, actually closer to uh, Japan than it is to Moscow. The terror attack in London last week by a British-born Muslim raises a strange possibility that actually looks like a mathematical certainty, and that is that we could be looking at the end of Britain as we know it before the end of this century. The policy of mass immigration in Britain has uh, brought what one expert calls demographic upheaval to the United Kingdom. Demographic upheaval that could change everything. Professor David Coleman, who's a professor of demography at Oxford, has written that uh, uncontrolled immigration in, in Britain could lead to what he calls finis Britannia, the end of Britain. Says he's not anti-Muslim, just simply looking at statistics. More than half a million non-British citizens immigrated to uh, the United Kingdom in 2016. Anne-Marie Walters from a watchdog group called Sharia Watch said, we have about 100 Sharia courts in the UK now. We're the only Western country with a functioning network of Sharia tribunals and councils. Attorney Jeff Sessions made a surprise appearance at uh, Press Secretary Sean Spicer's daily White House press briefing yesterday to announce that the Department of Justice is going to take steps to require that uh, sanctuary cities enforce federal immigration laws and uh, would seek to recover money granted by the Department of Justice to those cities if they refuse to comply. Sessions called on states like Maryland, we told you about last week, uh, wanting to become the country's first sanctuary state, and California to scrap plans to become sanctuary states. A group called Transparency, or American Transparency, in researching how much federal funding went to sanctuary cities and counties around the country in 2016, uh, the total was $27 billion. From the oops category, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, may have violated federal law when he failed to fully disclose details surrounding his membership on the executive board of a company called Jewel Unlimited and the 75,000 common shares of stock he received. Why? Because the energy company accepted millions of dollars from a company, a government fund connected to um, Vladimir Putin. Podesta never disclosed his position on the board of directors for Jewel Unlimited and failed to include the stock payout he received in his federal financial disclosures as required by law before he became President Obama's senior advisor in uh, 2014. 
Oops. And a note, just because I tend to follow the Chicago Bears, uh, NFL owners have approved the move of the Oakland Raiders to Las Vegas by a vote of 31 to 1. This took place at the annual league meetings in Phoenix. Vote pretty much a foregone conclusion after the league and Raiders ownership rejected a proposal by Oakland for a new stadium. Uh, Las Vegas then stepped up with a proposal that includes $750 million. That's three quarters of a billion in public money. Bank of America also giving Raiders owner Mark Davis a $500 or $650 million loan. Um, this is the third team relocation in the NFL in the last year. Rams moved from St. Louis, St. Louis to Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, the Chargers moving from San Diego to L.A. Apropos of nothing, just illustration of uh, what one can do when you have lots and lots of money to buy influence. Coming up, the state of New Mexico says no to doctor-assisted suicide. That's straight ahead on Skywatch TV. Right now, when you purchase the new book by Carl Gallup's When the Lion Roars from the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive the award-winning documentary movie, Inhuman, featuring the internationally acclaimed Skywatch television research team. Inhuman travels the globe and speaks with world authorities on the subject of transhumanism and unveils for the first time how breakthrough advances in science are moving humanity to a near future dominated by a new species of unrecognizably superior humans. You'll also receive the over five hour full length audio series, The Coming Technocalypse, featuring Skywatch TV's Josh Peck and radio legends Doug and Joe Hagman as they expose the role of future technologies in biblical prophecy. All three items sold separately hold a retail value of $60. Yours now for only $29.99 plus shipping and handling at skywatchtvstore.com. The New Mexico Senate narrowly stopped furtherance of a bill, a proposed bill, that would have legalized physician-assisted suicide in that state. Senate Bill 252 was voted down 22 to 20, as seven Democrats joined Republicans who opposed the bill. It was also opposed by the Republican governor, Susana Martinez, and Right to Life Mexico, as well as Roman Catholic groups in the state. Assisted suicide is currently a fourth-degree felony in New Mexico. Insect-sized robots could make humans extinct by the end of the century. That's according to a physicist from Minnesota, Louis Del Monte, who warns that these uh, tiny weapons, nano-weapons, could lead to the most destructive world war in history. So destructive it could spell the end of humanity. And this just isn't a long-term worry. According to uh, Del Monte, these weapons uh, are being developed as we speak. The U.S., Russia, China spending billions on developing these nano weapons right now. Former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak has been released from prison, let go on Friday, six years after the 2011 Egyptian Revolution, part of the Arab Spring, that forced him out of power and led to his arrest. Attorney representing the former Egyptian leader said that Mubarak was released from a military hospital in Cairo and has been allowed to return home. He was taken into custody in April. 2011 in connection with the killing of hundreds of protesters by security forces during the uh, revolution. After six years in custody, Mubarak was finally acquitted by a court this month. The 88-year-old Mubarak took power in 1981 after President Anwar Sadat was assassinated and ruled Egypt for 30 years. Last week, we told you about a 26-foot statue recovered from the mud at a housing development in Cairo, or a project that's underway, building project, archaeologists at the time said they thought it was the uh, famous a statue of the famous uh, Pharaoh Ramses II, or Ramses the Great, you know, the guy played by Ewell Brynner in the Ten Commandments. However, they were wrong. After examining the statue, even though the size, the style, and the location pointed to the identity as Ramses II, hieroglyphics on the back identified it as Samtek I, a little-known pharaoh from the 22nd, 26th dynasty, who um, ruled Egypt between 664 and 610 B.C. He's best known for helping to push the uh, Assyrians out of Egypt during his reign. He was succeeded by his son, Pharaoh Necho, who was mentioned in the Bible. Necho led an Egyptian army in, through the Holy Land and fought the army of Judah at the Battle of Megiddo in 609 B.C. That's where the good king Josiah was killed. 
2 Kings 23, if you want to look that up. Uh, which is apparently still can't accept the fact that Donald Trump won the election last November. They tried again to put another spell on uh, President Trump Sunday night, so-called binding spell to bind Donald Trump and all who abet him. Why Sunday night? Well, because that was the crescent moon. And apparently they believe that gives them some sort of uh, power, the spell. Now, we're not taking this lightly. The occult realm is real. And powers, principalities, thrones, dominions do respond to this type of working. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Pray for our leaders. That is a biblical command, whether we like him or, or not. Um, the witches, by the way, say they plan to keep doing this every crescent moon until Trump is forced from power. The next crescent moon comes up April 24th. One of the unexpected benefits of Messiah's arrival, a real estate boom in Israel. Who knew? A prominent rabbi in Israel is telling buyers to invest in real estate now because when Messiah comes, which could happen at literally any moment, according to the rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Zilber, Zilberstein, um, says once Messiah comes, land will be enormously valuable. He's adding, he adds that uh, during the Messianic period, common stones, just the very rocks from the ground, will gain wondrous qualities, making them more precious than gold, heal in illnesses and, and, and so forth. I, I will say this, we could do a lot worse than by planning our futures and banking our futures on the promises of God. But I don't think real estate investment is what he had in mind. An update on the Cosmic War Collection for all of you, and, and thank you, by the way, who ordered the Cosmic War Collection, my book, The Great Inception, Mike Heiser's book, Reversing Hermon, uh, plus the hardcover edition of the Book of Enoch and so forth. Um, we're still waiting from the printer for the copies of my book, The Great Inception. I would like to get my hands on a copy because this is my first nonfiction book, um, first book that Sharon and I didn't self-publish. So I'm, I'm eager to see this, um, but the uh, printer tells us that we are on track to ship the uh, collection beginning the second week of April. Now we know that's a month later than we promised and we realize how that makes us look. We based our initial ship date on the original promised date given to us by the printing company. So um, again, we just ask your patience. We thank you for your patience. And please be nice to the ladies in the office who take the phone calls. It's not their fault. They're doing the best they can. And they're only telling you what we've been told. So again, the target ship date, the second week of April. And I'm just as eager to see the book as you are. The new issue of Skywatch TV magazine coming out in April. That should be out in just a couple of weeks. Really good stuff in there. I can't tell you about it yet because some of the stuff is stuff that we aren't talking about yet on Skywatch TV. But it will coincide with some programs we've got coming up during the month of April that you will definitely want to see. Steve Quayle and Timothy Alberino returning to Skywatch TV. If you haven't yet, skywatchtvstore.com to order your subscription to the Skywatch TV magazine. Uh, the Hear the Watchman conference begins this Friday morning. It is sold out, so attending is not an option if you have not already registered for that conference, but you can participate in real time. You can watch it live on the internet. It's sort of like watching YouTube videos, except it's live. So it's like watching the TV on your computer. You can sign up for that still and save 5% on your registration for the live video stream from the Hear the Watchman conference by using the promo code at checkout Gilbert5. That's Gilbert and the numeral 5. Save 5%. And you Register at hearthewatchmen.com. That's hearthewatchmen.com. You'll find all of our stuff online, including links to all of our social media sites, our Facebook page, our Twitter feed, and our Instagram page for all of the pictures we take around here at skywatchtv.com. And I post all of my stuff at derekpgilbert.com. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.
northernmost major volcano in the Kamchatka Peninsula. That's in the far east of Russia. It's awoken for the first time in 248 years, believed to be the first eruption since 1769. Tourist organizations have been warned by the Russian government to stay away. It's uh, the so-called land of fire and ice. Again, the eastern, extreme eastern part of Russia, actually closer to uh, Japan than it is to Moscow. The terror attack in London last week by a British-born Muslim raises a strange possibility that actually looks like a mathematical certainty, and that is that we could be looking at the end of Britain as we know it before the end of this century. Witches toss another spell at Donald Trump. Former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak is finally free and a large volcano in Russia erupts for the first time since Catherine the Great. It's Skywatch TV for Tuesday, March 28th, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, British officials say that RAF jets were operating in the region of Mosul in Iraq, where hundreds of civilians were allegedly killed during coalition airstrikes on March 17th. The British tornadoes destroyed five terrorist Islamic State targets using laser-guided missiles, but they were flying in very challenging conditions and heavy cloud, according to the British government. As many as 200 civilians may have lost their lives in those strikes in Mosul. The U.S.-led coalition said it carried out a strike on ISIS militants and equipment in the area of the reported deaths. An investigation into those deaths is now underway. China Petroleum and Chemical Company, or Corporation, rather, or Sinopec, says it's been invited to invest in the Saudi Arabian oil company, Saudi Aramco, as part of the world's biggest ever initial public offering of stock. Talks are ongoing between Sinopec and Saudi Aramco. Saudi Arabia apparently wants to deepen its relationships with uh, its biggest buyers and lock. The policy of mass immigration in Britain has uh, brought what one expert calls demographic upheaval to the United Kingdom. Demographic upheaval that could change everything. Professor David Coleman, who's a professor of demography at Oxford, has written that uh, uncontrolled immigration in, in Britain could lead to what he calls finis Britanniae, the end of Britain. Says he's not anti-Muslim, just simply looking at statistics. More than half a million non-British citizens immigrated to uh, the United Kingdom in 2016. Anne-Marie Walters from a watchdog group called Sharia Watch said, we have about 100 Sharia courts in the UK in future demand for its oil. Saudi King Salman led a delegation to Asia this month where Saudi Aramco pledged $15 billion, $13 billion worth of investments in refining projects. Now for friend Joel Richardson, author of the recent book Mystery Babylon is right about uh, Saudi Arabia and Mecca being Mystery Babylon of end times prophecy. If you're marrying the world's biggest oil supplier with the world's biggest country. Yeah, this could be something to keep our eyes on. The Kambalni volcano has erupted for the first time since the reign of Catherine the Great. A five-mile-high plume recorded from the southern